record recording can start and i can give the recording okay uh, even even uh, when a person uh, takes a class offline what happens is the recording uh, is not available right uh, i told you now i used to uh, used to take the classes offline i used to take class and go but the recording will not be there in online the actual recording of the sessions will be there which you can use for your uh, entire life whenever you want to attend any interview after six months again you want to attend interview after two years again you want to at attend interview so you can just go to that particular specific video and then you can just uh, see the video and you can learn and you can have the entire uh, thing what is taught here so that is what is the benefit of online classes which you will never get in any any of the offline classes so we give the complete recording so that is what is the difference from the uh no that is a difference from the uh, other uh, offline classes so extract transform load testing so i have just started so extra so the etl tool what we use to perform this is informatica using informatica tool what will happen guys data is extracted extracted means it is taken from the source the source can be an excel file an xml file a particular database okay it can be a particular file a particular file can be a dot csv or dot psv file csv means guys there is a comma uh, separated value the values in that file will be separated by comma that is called as csv psv means the data will be separated by pipeline so i think this is the pipeline this is what is the uh, an extension will be dot csv and dot psv these are the source system any of them can be a source system then there can be transformation so transformation means the changes now changes can be anything it can be a small change or a big change suppose uh, a salary of a person is 1000 now he gets a 10% increment and his salary is increased to uh, 10% so 10000 uh, 1000 is the salary 10% increment 1100 is salary so this is a transformation what is the transformation logic here salary incremented incremented by 10 percent okay so this is what is the uh, uh, transformation logic first the sources source is suppose a database from a database that means a table from a table the trans extract data is extracted is transformed as per the logic this is the logic salary should get incremented by 10 percent is got loaded into the target again the incremented salary is 1100 so this is source this is target and this is what we welded that is what is called as etl testing they are two person etl developer and etl test engineer what we are going to become is etl test engineer etl developer develops that transformation logic and loads the data from the source to the target etl test engineer checks that transformation logic and the data which is loaded from source to target is matching. So in ETL testing, the end product is always a BI report. BI report is a business intelligence report, which is used by the higher management, like the MD, the CEO of the company sees the BI report and decides, okay, this many uh, sale is happening for a particular product for a particular duration of time. And this particular product is not having any sale. So based on that, they take the decision, okay, we have to increase the productivity of this product. We have to remove the productivity of this product. So that is nothing but your uh, decision taken by the uh, higher management, be it be CEO, be it be MD. That is what is the end product of ETL testing is nothing but your BI report. In ETL testing, uh, whenever you go to any interview or any project you learn, you have to, first of all, they will ask, can you tell me about your project? Or can you tell me about your project architecture? So if it is a manual testing, guys, it's always a, it's always a website kind of thing. Architecture. It's always, if it's a manual testing project, what will happen? First, suppose Facebook, what will happen? 
first we'll go to the UI, okay? UI is suppose login page, and then we'll go to the home page, and we'll test all the functionalities of that particular page and check, check what? Check the data from UI to the database. But if it is ETL testing, first thing will come is data and the end product will be what? End product will be, end product will be what? End product will be a report. That's the difference from ETL to manual testing. Manual testing, first thing we'll get a UI and then we'll check the functionality, we'll check the data in the UI of the Facebook whatever data username password and all is matching from the database but in etl testing first thing is data data will come from the sources be it be database be it be file be it be excel be it be xml it got transformed it got loaded and then finally in the end we got a bi report so here the is completely the reverse first is the data then is the end product is the report but here what happens first is the ui and then it is the db any doubt guys in these two points? Clear? Oh, okay, clear. Fine, fine. So guys in ETL architecture, uh, I told you there is a source, there's a staging area and there is a data warehouse. Then there is something called as data mart. And finally it is the BI report. So what happens guys is, and data is coming from source, it goes to the staging area. Here the minimal round, you have to tell this project only guys, always you will tell what? Data migration project. Whenever you explain, always explain data migration project and data migration means what? Data is moving. Migration means movement of person from one, one place to another. So data is coming from source, it goes to the staging, to the data warehouse, to the data mart, to the BI report. Staging area is an area where the minimal uh, data quality checks happen. Data quality checks happen. Minimal data quality checks like your uh, data type. Data type, as you know, number, character, all these are data type checks that we do here. And uh, some uh, rounding of, of the data. Suppose, uh, suppose the data is suppose 7.999. Nine. Now I have to round it to the uh, one digit. So it will be eight. This kind of checks we'll do in the staging area. Actual testing, uh, actual transformation happens in data warehouse, where what will happen, guys? So many transformation logics are there, which we have to validate. This is the actual toughest portion of ETL testing, most difficult part, most complex part. Suppose data is getting aggregated and loaded. Data is getting filter transformation. So this is what we are going to learn. That is the actual uh, transformation happens in the data warehouse architecture. Data Mart is a subset of data warehouse. Data Mart is a subset of data, uh, data warehouse. So what happened is there are so many uh, uh, employees uh, data in a data warehouse. Now we have divided into separate, separate uh, modules like HR department finance department, like your uh, security department. So all the information of the employees working in security department, this is called as data mart. And last is your PI report, where the report is generated. And then testing will be two types. What are the testing types? First will be from the source to the data warehouse. Actually it is data mart, but at the time of telling, we tell what data warehouse only because data mart is a part of the data warehouse. So source to data warehouse and next testing will be from data warehouse to what? To the BI report. These are the two kinds of testing we do. First is source to data warehouse. This is called as guys ETL testing. And when we take the data from where? From data warehouse to BI report. This is called as what guys? This is called as what? This is called as your BI report testing. So both the things we are going to learn here, we are going to learn ETL testing and we are also going to learn BI report testing. So this is how guys we'll proceed and uh, we'll go to our uh, material and start uh, learning guys. This is the architecture uh, which is already I have given here. Let me just show you. 
so this is the architecture there this is the source system don't tell about this ods operational data source this is a landing area no company uses this there's a very minimal kind of checking uh, checks happen here it used to happen in a very uh, previous organization but now it does not happen so tell from source it is going to the staging area from staging it is going to the data warehouse from data warehouse to the data mart from data mart to the bi report that is nothing but your dashboard report and from the dashboard report it is shown by the shown to the end users we have to do the testing in every layer from source to staging staging and then staging to data warehouse data warehouse to data mart data warehouse to bi report but when you explain this will become very complex so what you have to tell is the etl architecture is source to staging staging to data warehouse data warehouse to data mart and data mart to bi report testing is divided into two parts from source to data warehouse and from data warehouse to bi report any doubts guys in etl architecture is it fine everyone yes or no yeah. Yeah. good yeah. so this is the testing i wrote like uh, in landing area which is not used now data type check and name of employee should start with first uh, letter as capital all these things are actually in real time will be in staging area all this data quality check like there should not be any underscore in the uh, in the particular data there should not be any unnecessary null value rounding of the data decoding of the data so all these are called as data quality checks this is in a staging area in data warehouse actual transformation logic suppose salary is incremented by 10% on out of four department only one department is getting loaded now guys data warehouse is uh, again uh, uh, this is the definition of data warehouse the data is in the data warehouse is integrated that means from different different databases it gets integrated that is uh, the first point the more most important point subject oriented it is related to a particular subject like sales time variant means it is old data to 2 years uh, 10 years 100 year 1000 years that kind of data is there non volatile since the data is huge 100 year data so we cannot use update and delete so all this four properties if a database has that becomes a data warehouse if you forget everything just tell that the data in the data warehouse is always an integrated data from all the databases the data is getting integrated in the data warehouse these four properties subject oriented that means related to a particular subject integrated time variant means this a old data huge amount of historic data non volatile means we cannot just keep on updating and all update delete all these things we cannot do that is what is the data warehouse data mart is a subset of what data warehouse now guys so we will understand the kind of validations we do okay first thing is that if i have to validate the data between source and target the first thing is the structure validation then count then data so we will understand this how we uh, do this validations and what are the transformations here suppose guys now what you have to do is you have to understand all these validations like data aggregation now these are the transformation this is what we have to learn so aggregate transformation expression transformation filter transformation then there is your shorter transformation router transformation all this transformation we have to understand and if we understand this we understood etl testing this is very very important very very critical and very very valuable then guys uh, this kind of these are called as data quality checks guys like making the first letter as capital letter rounding of the data removing unwanted data the unwanted or junk data means what having extra comma or extra space or extra apostrophe these things we check in the source also and then the checking the data uh, data in the column is as per the data type that means checking the data type in the source and target now guys what is this uh, duplicate check in surrogate key null values all these things we will learn slowly let me just come to the um, transformation guys transformation we have divided into two types one is active transformation and one is passive transformation whenever we tell active transformation some records will will, will not pass through it to the target 
there are two kind of transformations guys always remember in etl testing in informatica there are two kind of transformation one is what guys active transformation and one is what guys passive transformation in active transformation number of records will reduce when it passes from source to target number of records will reduce when data goes from source to target here what will happen guys passive transformation number of records will not reduce when data goes from source to target now that is what is the active and passive guys active what will have number of records will reduce but here the number of records will not reduce example of active transformation is like your filter transformation and your router transformation here uh, example of passive transformation is uh, example is expression transformation okay so all these are we will learn guys what is this transformation and how we build it as of now active transformation number of records will reduce when it goes from source to target in passive transformation number of records will not reduce when the data goes from source to target first transformation in informatica i am starting that is nothing but your aggregate transformation now understand it clearly neatly ask as many as questions you can ask because this is the most complex challenging part of etl testing this is a table whose name is suppose uh, source okay this is a table whose name is target now this is the etl mechanism are you able to see the etl mechanism yes or no guys yes are you able to see etl mechanism yes so that means the data from this source is loaded into the target and this is the aggregated and this is the etl logic which has happened and data is loaded like this now what we want to we want to validate each and every data the challenge is what to validate each and every data that is what is the thing guys let me zoom it are is it visible yes yes so this is the source this is the target this is the notepad now we have to validate all of you know sql or not uh, what about the newcomers do you know sql yes. guys yes. yes or no Yes. Yeah. Okay. Some idea. If you have, we don't require much SQL here. SQL will take separately. Those who have missed the class, that will be separate. As of now, guys, this is a source. This is a target. Okay. Now, what happened, guys, is here there is a salary column. Now, what happened is, for every department, there is a particular salary. For department twenty, the salary is eight hundred here. again if you see carefully guys analyze the data guys this is very very important this is again department 20 here the salary is 2975 here the department 20 salary is 3000 like that there's there for department 20 there are lot of salaries and the average for each department suppose department 20 the average salary is 2175 you know how to take average how what is average tell me first of all what is average adding I, all salaries and divided by the number of uh, uh, employees exactly. yes exactly correct suppose 10 and 20 is there we'll add this 10 plus 20 and then what divide by 2 divide, divide by 2 divide by 2 and what will be the output guys 15 15 will be the output this is how we take the average now in sql there is a function called as average yes or no yes if i write average sal it will give the average of salary so for each department so for department 20 this is department 20 there lot of salary 800 is also there like that 20 again there is a salary or uh, 2975 and average for 20 department is 2175 average for 10 department is this 2916.66 average for department 30 is this value like that sum means what total value total, total. sum means what Total. total total means what 10 plus 20 is 30 that is nothing but your sum so this is the uh, sum of the salary for department 10 20 30 count means what guys count means what 
the count mm -hmm. may be, yeah yeah how many records are there in this department suppose department 10 there are three records one this record one this record one this record so for department 10 the count is three department 20 count is five department uh, 30 count is six high cell means the highest salary for department 10 is 5000 20 is 3000 30 is 2850 Low cell means for department 10, the lowest salary is 1300. For department 20, the lowest salary is 800. For department 30, the salary is 950. Now we have to validate the data. Yes or no, guys? Yes. So, Anno, are you ready? Yes. yes. Now, this yes. is source, this is target. Assuming we have validated the structure. Structure means what, guys? The data type. If you remember the query, I told you DESC source. Now what will give this will give the data type of the particular table okay and also in the target we will write desc target and what will happen it will give the description of the particular table and we'll just check that the if it is number column suppose salary is a number column then it is a number or not that is what is the thing so that validation is fine that is already understood we have validated the structure now comes the actual validation first we have to validate what we have to do the count validation what we have to do guys count, count validation. validation so first the number of records in the source should match what number of records where in the target yes target. Or no? yes yes so now guys now if i want to get the number of count of the department in 10 20 30 and this uh, count how it will match can you just think source what will be the count, guys? Tell me. If I want to validate the source count, what will be the count and what will be the count in the target? How can I validate the each and every count of the number of records? Data is getting aggregated and loaded into the target table. So first thing, guys, how can we validate the uh, count of the number of records? Can you just think? Select distinct. Have you heard about distinct? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Distinct, yes. Means, distinct means unique values. Distinct means what, guys? Unique values. Select count of distinct department number from this source table. So in this query, I don't know how many of you know SQL. Those who have taught SQL and those who have not taught also. See, this query is telling I want the distinct, means no duplicate. Okay. So I did distinct 10, 20, 30. Distinct means what? No duplicate, only unique values of the department number, their count. So unique count of those department number will be what? For department 10, the count is one. For department 20, the count is one. And department 30, the count is one. So what will be the output? Output is three. Yes or no, guys? Mm. Any doubt, guys, here? Tell me, guys, yes or no? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I have a question. If you are not using that uh, distinct there, uh, how much count it will give? See, this is what distinct if you will not use, guys, then what will happen? It will count the entire column, right? It will count okay. the entire column. 14 will come output. Yes or no? Yes. Let, let us just see, guys, what happens. Let us come here to Oracle. Actually, I don't know. You have not attended my school sessions or what? You have not attended. That's why. But I'll just show you. Wait. Understand, guys, this way, uh, transformation well lessons neatly because this is very, very challenging. I think uh, uh, it takes two, three times to understand this. And I go very slowly in this thing because this is, again, I know that... Uh, um, learning this is really tough. This is your source, right? Considering this EMP table is your source. Now, if I write select count of department number from EMP, what will happen, guys? How many records I'm getting? Tell me how many records I'm getting. Am I getting 14 records or not? The number of records. 
How many records are there? 14 records. What is the output? 14. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Now, what I'm writing here is select count of distinct distinct department number from EMP. Now, what will be the count, guys? Is it three? Yes or no, guys? That means I don't want any duplicate count. How, what is the count of department 10, 20 and 30? If it is distinct, one for department 10, one for department 20, one for department 30. What is the count? Three. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Yes or no? Any doubts, guys? Anyone? No. Fine. Now, if you have understood this much, now tell me this is the query in the source side. This is the now what will be the count? Uh, how will I count the number of records in the target side? Can you tell me? Sell no, no, no. Why we'll take the duplicate? We'll no, we don't require it's always a unique value, right? We have aggregated the values and loaded the target. There's no duplicate, right? For department 10. I'm getting some disturbance, guys. Please mute. For department 10, where's that disturbance coming? For department 10. Where is the disturbance coming? I don't know. Fine. For department 10, what is the maximum salary? For department 20, what is the uh, maximum salary? For department 30, what is the maximum salary? So what is happening, guys, is this is already a unique value. Why? For department 10, how many maximum value will be there? Only one maximum value. Yes, yes. or no, guys? Yes. No, where I'm getting this disturbance? Is it from my end or your end? Can you mute everyone? Can you mute yourself, please? Just mute yourself. Everyone, please mute yourself. I get disturbed, actually. Yeah, now see the count of. Yeah, yeah. Now it is clear. Yeah. So guys, now see here. In the target side, what happens for department 10? What is the maximum salary? For department 20, what is the maximum salary? For department 30, what is the... So this is already a unique value. We don't know. We need to use what? Distinct. Yes or no, guys? See, for department 10, if I tell who is earning the highest salary, there will be only one person who is earning the highest salary. Who, what is the, for department 10, what is the average salary? That means that value is department 10 is a unique value here because average salary for department 10 will be always a one record. For department 20, what is the average salary? It will be a one record. For department 30, what is the average salary? It will be a one record. So we do not need to use this distinct here because this data is aggregated based on the department number and then loaded into the target table. So what will happen is here, we'll directly write what? Select count of department number. From which table, guys? Everyone tell me what is, what is the table? Target. Anu, are you there? Yes or no? Yes. So, so what will be the output here? Three. Three. Is the count matching, guys? Tell me yes or no. Yes. Yes. If it is matching, guys, so this is the first validation, count validation. Are you clear about this? Any doubts? Is it clear? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Sir. Then we have to validate the data. So what we have to do? Data validation. How can we do to the data validation? I told you we have to use which operator, guys? Minus. Yes or no, guys? Yes. A minus me B means means what guys? Data present in A and not present in what? Present in B. And B minus A means what guys? B minus A means what guys? Tell me everyone. B minus A means what? Present in A, not in B. Uh, data <laughs> reverse. Data present in B. B and not present in what? A. Yeah. Not present in A guys. This is very, very clear you have to do. If I tell source minus target, that means what, guys? Source minus target means data present in? Data source. present in? Source. Present in source and not present in what? Target. Target. If I tell target minus source, then what will happen, guys? Data present in what? Target. Target and not present in what? Source. Both we have to check. So do you know between them we put a operator called as union. Have you heard about that? Yes. 
Union is an operator which is used to get the common values from both the sets. Yes or no, guys? Yes, I taught in SQL there is a set A having a value 1, 2, set B having a value. Uh, what is the value? 1 and 3. So if I tell union operator, then what will happen? Union between set A and B. That means we can directly write what? A union B. Anu, what will be the output? Can you just tell me? One. One will come only once. Then what will come? Two and three. Are you to understand? Whatever okay. values from both is set and common values will come only once. Are you to understand? Yes. And if I write union all, then what will happen? One, two, three. And again, what will come? One. Are you able to understand? Union yes. means what, guys? Only all the values from both the set and duplicate will come only one. Okay. But union all means what, guys? All the values from both the set, if you remember. And there is something called as intersect. Intersect is only common value. What is the common value? That too, not the duplicate, only one. And then I told you minus. What is minus, guys? A minus B means what? Tell me. Data present in A and not present in B. What is that data? Can you just tell me? Two. Yes or no? Yes. And B minus A, what will be the output? Can you just tell me? B minus A, anyone? Can can someone tell me the output? Anyone? B minus A? Anno? Can you just try? Yes. Yeah, anyone? B minus A will be what? Srinivas, can you just guess? Rakesh, B minus Three. A? Three. Three. That is the data present only in B and not present in A. What is the data which is only present in B and not present in A? That is three, right? One is present here and two is present here, which we don't care. What we care is that data which is only present in B and not present in A. That is three. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Yes. So after all these things, we'll do the data validation. Data validation will be done what? Using which query, guys? Can you just tell me? Using minus, minus query. Fine, guys. So what we'll write is, first we have to write frame this uh, source query. So what we'll write is, select. What will be? We want average salary. So average cell. Then we want what, guys? Sum of cell. Sum of cell and what we want count of cell count of cell highest cell then what will you use max of cell then what we want minimum cell then mean of cell then for each department so comma department number from which table source group by what guys department number yes or no guys so we'll get the same thing like this. Let us just see once. Let us just see once. In the query, if we see, we get a better clarity. Let me just open. So if, suppose in the, this is a source table. If I write select, what I write? First is what? Average cell. So average of cell. Then is what, guys? Next is what? I forgot the diagram. What is that? Sum, yeah. Now we'll take the sum of cell. Then what is that? Next is what? count count of cell then what guys maximum salary max of cell then minimum salary mean of cell then i want the department number department number from the source table suppose the source table name is emp group by what guys department number okay so oh yeah select what happened from keyword is missing Group by department number. What happened, guys? Select. Let us just see the query. What is the query? Average of cell. Here I did not give the comma. Okay. That is what is the thing. You have to always give the comma. Average of cell, sum of cell, count of cell, max of cell, mean of cell, and then comma department number from this table, group by department number. Fine, guys. Now you have to execute this query. So now see, I have got the same values or not, guys? See this value. Yes or no? Yes. It is same like what? Your target table? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Yes. 
see this value and this value if you compare no this is same means the output of this query is this now see this is this the same value 51766 six, and all this 2175 is this the same value or not yes or no guys tell me everyone yes so this is the source query now source minus what guys can you just tell me minus what target so how will i write the target query just tell me select what we'll write about is all the column names what are the column names all the column names which is present in the target table we do not run, need to frame the query in the target always will frame in the source what is the column name avg cell just write here avg cell then what is the column name sum cell write down sum cell then comma then guys what is the next thing what is the third column count cell just take the count cell see don't write in bracket bracket means a function this is that just the name of the column this is this is a function always bracket means a function this is the name of the column then what is the name of the column guys can you just tell me what is the name of the column next column can everyone help me what is the next name of the column high right. cell then what is the na name of the column low cell then guys what is the next column department from which table target. from target and what should be the output guys what should be the output Output should be expected. Output is what, guys? Everyone, tell me what is the expected output? No rows selected. No yes or no, guys? Yes. Because there is no data which is present from which is present in source and not present in target. If I want to write in reverse way, how can I write? Can you just tell me target? This is source minus target. Now, if I want to write target minus source, tell me how will I write? In real time, we use both. In real time, we use both. So we'll write target minus source. But here for practice, generally we practice source minus target, but in real time, both are used. Source minus target and target minus source. There can be some data which is present in target and not present in source. Target minus source, what will be the query? Can anyone tell me? First, we'll write the target query. Then what we will write, guys? Can you just tell me? Minus, what I will write the source query. Yes or no, guys? Yes. yes. And what should be the output? Can someone tell me what should be the output? No rows selected. No rows, absolutely correct. No rows selected. This is what? First we validated what, guys? Can you just tell me first we validated what? Count. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Then we validated what? Data. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Now sometimes they tell that we validate the duplicate. Suppose in this employee number column in this table, there. So suppose this is a target table, guys. Let me just create a target table. Okay. Give me just one second. This is your target table, guys. Now, in this target table, we check that there should not be any duplicate value. If the column uh, is defined like that, business logic is there. In this employee number, there should not be any duplicate value. So what will be the query? They always remember this duplicate query they are asking. Select employee number, comma, count of star from the target table. Then what, guys? Group by what? Employee number having what? Count of star greater than one. Output should be no records selected. That means what, guys? I wanted this duplicate. So what I would written? Selected that column. Employee number, they count. Count of this employee number from this table, grouped by this particular column, having the count greater than one. That means this count of this employee number, if I want to check, what is the count of this employee number? Select count of a star from this target table where employee number equals to what? 7369. What is the output, guys? Tell me. Is it one or not? Yes. That means the count of this particular employee number is one. 
and if it is more than one that means what it is duplicate yes or no guys and no are you there if yeah. the count of this employee number is one that means it is unique but if it is more than one that means what duplicate that means it is duplicate that means what i have written having count star greater than what one yes or no yes so is there so what we have done is we wanted the count of employees from this target table group it but grouped it based on this employee number co column and then having is a filter condition for grouped data so having count of star greater than 1 if it is greater than 1 that means it is duplicate so output should be what no record selected that means all these values are unique yes or no guys always remember this duplicate query this query i don't know more than 1000 places this is asked any doubt in this query tell me anyone any doubt uh, venkat uh, no so this is called as guys this is called as what duplicate query so now if i have to check that there is no null value in this employee number column so what i will write null check select a star from target table where employee number is null so no records found if there is a null value it will be coming and that will be a bug here the criteria was this this should not have any duplicate value this should not have any null so i have written is null is there any null output is no record selected it is pass if there is null that will become a defect if there is duplicate that will become a defect so four validations guys is mandatory one is what guys count validation then is data validation then is what guys duplicate check and next is what guys none. null check channel check tell me the query for duplicate check can everyone tell me just try try to write the query duplicate check select tell me everyone employee number then comma what count of star from which table target group by what guys group by department number count a star greater than uh, one output will be what no rows selected selected next is null check what is the query for that employee number column select a star from target okay. table where employee number is null output should be what guys no rows selected this four check is the mandatory check guys count minus duplicate and null everyone should know for any etl tester what are the kinds of validation we have done i have validated the structure of the table i have validated the count i have validated the minus using the uh, to validate the data i have done the duplicate check i have done the null check and lastly you tell what as per the business logic any business transformation is there that also i have checked as per business logic that means business logic suppose salary incremented by 10% decremented by 10% all these any kind of transformations changes are there that also i have validated but this count minus duplicate and null is mandatory that is why i have taken full class for this one and this is one validation you came to know aggregate by transformation so you see how much time it takes to understand this validation i have written neatly guys all the duplicate query all these things and null validation everything i have written and tomorrow i'll start your filter validation and we'll start the actual etl testing from the filter validation i will share this document this recording and uh, those who wants to continue please uh, pay your fees and take the software and we'll meet tomorrow at same time 8 to 9 pm and that's all guys for today thank you everyone you may hello sir yeah yeah tell me tell me. Uh, i have one question Yeah. Rest of you can leave. Those who don't have any question, yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, when 